Okay, what we're going to do is start a unit on energy and states of matter. And basically what we're going to do is look at how energy is exchanged in chemical processes, but also in physical processes. The first thing we need to do then is talk about what is energy. And what we'll do is talk about energy, heat, and temperature. So basically energy is the capacity to do work. And when you take your physics class, what you're going to do is go over a formula that says work is equal to force times distance. Now that's not going to be a concern of ours, but basically when you exert some sort of energy, that is your ability to apply a certain force over a certain distance. The next important concept is what we refer to as the law of conservation of energy. And if you remember back from a few units ago, we talked about the law of conservation of mass. Well, the law of conservation is, of energy is basically the same thing. What it says is that in a given system, you have a certain amount of energy. In other words, there's a certain amount of energy in the universe. You can't create energy and you can't destroy energy. All you can do is transfer energy from one part of the system to another part of the system. And when you move on in chemistry, we'll talk about the system and surroundings, but basically what we're concerned with is transferring energy from one system to another. So you could say in chemistry that there are really two fundamental concepts, law of conservation of mass and law of conservation of energy. Probably 90% of what we talk about throughout this course deals with those two ideas. Okay, two terms that you've probably heard before are potential energy and kinetic energy. Now we'll deal mostly with kinetic energy, but let's just go over the definitions as reminders. Potential energy is basically energy due to position or composition. So if you have a floor here and you take a weight and you raise it up to a certain height, it now has more potential energy. If it's at a lower height, it has a little bit less poten potential energy. With chemistry, what you're talking about with potential energy is the structure of the compound. You have chemical, you have chemical potential energy, which is basically a description of how much energy can be released or absorbed for that matter based on a molecule's or a compound's composition. Kinetic energy, on the other hand, is, kinetic, is energy due to motion. In other words, the faster something is moving, the more energy it has. When you take physics, you'll go over the equation, kinetic, kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. For us, what we're primarily concerned with is as compounds or as particles move faster, they have more kinetic energy. If you remove kinetic energy from the system, particles slow down. So the faster the kinetic energy, the higher the temperature. In fact, a good relationship to know is that kinetic energy and temperature are directly related. As you double kinetic energy, temperature doubles. Okay, a few more ideas about heat, energy, and work. Okay, when we talk about energy, we said that that's the ability to do work. Heat is a little bit different. Heat is a transfer of energy between two objects due to a temperature difference. So for example, if you have a hot cup of coffee, say 100 or say 90 degrees Celsius, and it's, at, and it's in a room at 25 degrees Celsius, the heat transfer is going to be from the hot coffee to the cooler room. In other words, the coffee is going to cool down a little bit and the room is actually going to warm up a little bit. Now obviously that's going to be a small amount based on the size of the room, but you're talking about a transfer of energy between two objects due to a temperature difference. And it's important to realize that energy always tri transfers from the hot object to the cooler object. The coffee is never going to get warmer if the room that it's in is at a lower temperature than the coffee itself. We mentioned work, but we're not going to focus much at all on work, so I'm not going to uh, say anything more than what I've already said.
Okay, energy is a state function. And a state function is something that, again, we'll deal with more when you move on in chemistry. But basically what it says is that you are concerned with the initial conditions and the final conditions. You're not concerned with how the process took place to get from here to here. All you're interested in is the initial and final conditions. And what we'll use often is this symbol delta, which means change. So for instance, what we'll talk about is temperature. What we're concerned with is the initial temperature and the final temperature. So we'll say delta T, whoops, delta T is equal to the difference between those two temperatures. So a state function does not depend on the process, it just depends on the initial conditions and the final conditions. As we talk about energy transfers, one thing you want to keep in mind is the difference between the system and the surroundings. For us, being chemistry students, the system is typically the beaker that we're dealing with, or whatever the reaction vessel happens to be, and then the surroundings are everything else. So for example, your system is the chemical reaction that's taking place. Your surroundings would be, say, air pressure, air temperature, um, and other various things. But typically, we're, we're talking about the pressure and temperature. And again, if you move on and take physics, you do a lot more discussion about the system and the surroundings. But for us, the system is the reaction vessel the surroundings are everything around it. As we talk about energy, we're going to talk about the direction, as we talked about, and that's described by these two terms, endothermic versus exothermic. Endo meaning inside, exo meaning outside. So when we talk about an endothermic process or an endothermic reaction, what we're saying is heat is flowing into the system from the surroundings. Exothermic reactions, on the other hand, heat is flowing out of the system. Now when we talk about endothermic and exothermic, you've got to keep these straight because you're either talking about a physical process or a chemical process. For physical processes, if the system is getting hotter, that's an endothermic process. Think of a cup of water. For you to warm up a cup of water, you've got to put energy into the water. If something is getting cooler, that's an exothermic process. In other words, it's releasing that energy and cooling down. Chemical processes, on the other hand, are all, you could almost think of it as being an opposite. And let's talk about exothermic first. Exothermic reactions release heat. So if the reaction is taking place in a beaker and it's releasing heat, that beaker is going to feel hot. On the other hand, and this is the one that confuses students, endothermic reactions are absorbing heat from the surroundings and they're going to feel cool. The problem is when people think, well, something's absorbing energy, it has to be getting hot. Well, that's a physical process. In a chemical process, that energy is going into breaking bonds. It's not affecting the temperature of the system. So what happens is as, let's just say, a beaker is absorbing energy, it's absorbing it from the surroundings. If your hand is holding the beaker, it's absorbing that energy from your hand, so your hand is losing energy, and it's going to feel cool. So just keep these two things straight. In a physical process, think of water heating up or cooling down. Endothermic is going to feel warmer. Exothermic will feel cooler. In a chemical process, it's the opposite. Exothermic is going to release heat in your, and it will feel hot. Endothermic will feel cold. Okay, so let's do an example here. Is freezing water an endothermic or exothermic process? So if you're talking about freezing, you're going from liquid water to solid, in other words, ice. So if you've got liquid to ice, is that a chemical or physical process? 
it's a physical process. So if you're going from liquid to solid, do you have to release heat from the system or absorb heat? Liquid has to get rid of heat to cool down to become ice. So that is an exothermic process. If we were trying to melt the ice on the other hand, then it would have to absorb heat to warm up, then it would be an endothermic process. Okay, let's go through some examples here. Of the, are these exothermic and endothermic? So your hand gets hold, cold when you touch ice. Again, the first thing you want to think, is this physical or chemical? Well, I think these are all physical, so if your hand is getting cold, that's going to be exothermic. The ice gets warmer when you touch it. So the ice, is that exothermic or an endothermic process? That's going to be an endothermic. If the ice is getting warmer, it's absorbing heat. Water boils when heated on a stove, so to get water to boil, you've got to put heat into it. So endothermic. Water vapor condensing. So you're going from steam to liquid. So is it cooling down or warming up? Well, it's cooling down. So for the water vapor to cool down, it has to release heat, so it's exothermic. And ice cream melting, that's essentially going from a solid to a liquid. In other words, it's warming up, so that's endothermic. Okay, this last slide is important, so you might want to pause this and write some notes or uh, take a look at your book. What it is is it's the kinetic theory of gases, and we're going to use this in this unit because it describes how kinetic energy and temperature are related. So I'm not going to read through this whole thing. I'll just point out some highlights. Gases are made up of molecules, and they're always in motion. One thing you want to realize is that even though you might have a solid substance, all particles are always moving. When they're not moving, we call that absolute zero. And again, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, the second part says particles are always combining or colliding with themselves with the container. We'll talk about this when we talk about the gas laws, so I'm not going to say anything about that right now. We've talked about the third part a little bit. Average kinetic energy is directly related or directly proportional to temperature. And the fourth part we're not going to talk about much until we talk about gases also. So for this, what you're concerned with is this first part and this third part. Particles are always in motion, and the kinetic energy is directly related to the temperature. Okay, that's the end of that vodcast. What we're going to do in the next couple of vodcasts in this unit is start looking at some of these concepts in terms of calculations and calculate values for these energy transfers.